Right, so it's Tory Romandy this week. Finished with Adam Yates winning the overall. Case okay, surprise. Uh, not really. Um, you kind of thought probably he would. Uh, but anyway, Jorgensen second. Kind of surprised. Caruso looked good. Same with Max Poole. So all in all, pretty impressive uh, performance from quite a lot of guys. Bernal looked good. Eddie Dunbar as well. Like there's, there's a lot of people who kind of maybe outperform themselves. Will Barter won the TT. But what I want to talk about today is kind of just like the climbing stages. Because like the, uh, there's some things cracking me recently. So we're going to have some 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 sort of critical stuff. But anyway, we'll go to the thing that's cracked me. So this is Lantern's uh, website. Despite not winning, Thibaut Pino and Damian Cruz did their career peak numbers for this duration. Um, and they're basically trying to say that like all these people are like doing like their best ever numbers in Romandie. Now, obviously, I massively disagree up front with this um, because if this is true, then uh, basically it means that people are faster in Romandie in 2022, 2023, sorry, than they were in the tour in 2019. Now, that is a lie, um, unfortunately, because if that was the case, then we'd have a lot of people uh, winning Grand Tours. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So we're going to break this down to two parts. We're going to break it down to, are they climbing faster? And does this mean that they're doing the same what's for Kido? Now, obviously, I have to caveat, these donkey, well, these people here are doing estimations of what's for Kido. I don't think it's massive wrong, massively wrong today. They said 5.95. Um, now, I can crack out a million different power meter sources. Probably they'll all be wrong. Um, Bernal said 5.9, but he's on a Shimano, so that's probably wrong. Uh, Pino didn't have any power there because he's a king. Um, this is Max Poole didn't have his weight in. So again, he's probably maybe 60, could be slightly heavier, not sure. And then we have Matteo Jorgensen, who's the only one I trust. And he's, because he's on a quark, and he did 5.8. But he spent a lot of time in the wind. So we're already on, on wind calculation. So anyway, it's probably around that. They climbed 1,600 RAM on 7.8% for 20 kilometers. So very impressive. Now, what we're going to do is find, you know what? An absolutely identical climb called... The Tourmalade. Okay, it's a little bit different. It's 18k at 7%. But if we actually, sorry, if we look at the segment here, 20k at 7.8%, 18k, we're talking 2k difference. It's honestly not too bad. And the segment, actually, if you go further, it is um it is a little bit longer. So Pino here did 1600 VAM. Uh, so that's decent, to be fair. And then Pino here did 1551 on this segment here. Okay, it's not the exact same segment, but we can kind of see... Not to, you know, career performances. And then and then we've got one thing to kind of have a look at, which I reckon is a pretty important factor when we're looking at how good people's performance is, is where it comes. Oh, yeah, he did it on stage 14. Oh, maybe maybe that might have a difference on impact, on uh, fatigue. Like, just these stupid statements of people doing their career peak numbers. Like, what you want about, like, if you want to crack his best number is probably in training with an hour max test. So, like, are we going to compare that now? Like, I just don't see the point of this article. Anyway, what we did find was George Bennett. He did 5.7 watts per kilo for 53 minutes. So that's basically just like the same as what they did in Romandie, uh, apparently. But at the end, in the tour, which is obviously like going to be harder the whole time, and at stage 14. So I would not really say it's a career peak performance from any of these people. Um, I don't know where they, they kind of find these peak numbers and like what they do with all of it. I don't think this is helping me being on dark mode because I literally can't see this graph. But all I'm trying to say is that they need to take this with a pinch of salt. I don't think Romandy people are going to be turning up and winning the tour anytime soon. Um, because if they were, uh, we'd be in pretty big trouble. Now, people are climbing quicker. And this is something that is kind of harder to explain. Uh, because from 2019, um, there's not a massive increase in kind of sports science. Like, you know, 2019 was like they were donkeys. Um, but anyway, so... What's the conclusion of Romandie? Well, the climbing was pretty decent, I'm not going to lie. 1,600 BAM for 21 kilometers is very impressive, no doubt about it. Um, well, this is for burnout. Obviously, Yates was a little bit faster, so it is impressive. But the thing you do have to remember, and as we'll see in this article, it was paced very hard from the bottom, which makes a massive difference because it means no one is messing around. And at the top, when they started attacking, once they went, that was kind of it. Like, there wasn't really much uh, messing around too much. So, again, that means why they were climbing quicker. Um, but, yeah, I think that's, to be honest, all I really need to say about the Romandy. Um, I used to look decent on the TT. Then he, then he didn't look good on the climb. Pino is back, which is always big. And apart from that, 
there's not really much to say. Like, Yates is good at one-week stage races. I, mean, I kind of knew that. Um, so, again, I, I would just say, like, when people say career peak performances, it's good to look at some context. Um, this was a hard stage before, nonetheless. 5.4 for 37 minutes, 4.942. It was definitely hard, but it's not, like, Tour de France level, you know. If we look at the kind of, like, back to Pino, like, okay, it was a TT the day before, um, but, you know, he like, the last rest day was was quite a long time previously. So it was it was pretty rough. Um, and then he came second in Poire the day after. So I think it's tough to compare. Um, and I think, in my opinion, people should not take numbers by the absolute and kind of just look at how they're doing in the season rather than trying to compare historic performances across different races with just so many different parameters. And also people should stop estimating what's per kilo, but that's life. Um, we've already made a video. So that's enough ranting from me. Cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next one.